In this clip, we'll learn about strategies for laying out our assets UVs so that we can take advantage of some unique features over inside of Mari. Okay, so this is going to be your Module 1 Clip 2 Begin file. You'll find this inside the Maya Files folder within your exercise files. Now, inside this scene file, I have three versions of the same asset, and this is the asset we're going to be working with throughout this course. And I just wanted to kind of let you know kind of the approach that this asset is taking. Now, I know there are a number of different approaches for developing an asset when it comes to high res, low res, and kind of the process of creating those two versions of an asset. Maybe you have modeled this little creature entirely inside of Maya, and you're ready to start texturing him. And maybe you actually have modeled a low-res version of this and then taken it over into a high-res sculpting application like ZBrush or Mudbox and created a high-res version of this asset. Well, for this course, this asset will have a high-res version, but we're not going to really be working with it. We're going to assume that we've brought the high-res and the low-res here inside of Maya for Mac baking purposes. So. The reason I have three here is because I wanted to talk to you a little bit in this video about laying out your UVs. Let's focus on this guy first. Let me just jump over into my polygon shelf and open up the UV texture editor here. And I'm just going to select a piece of this little crab creature and I'll tap the up arrow key to select the entire group. And you can see I've laid out the UVs for this asset. Now, this is a pretty typical layout, and if you're just needing a single texture for each map that you're going to produce, uh, this would probably work. Uh, now, I've assigned a simple Lambert with a checker texture to it, uh, just so we can kind of get an idea of how these UVs are laid out. And you can see that everything is proportional. The, all of the squares in my checker grid are about the same size, and we're relatively distortion-free. So this is a pretty solid UV layout if we were going with something like this. Now this is nothing new. This is how UVs have been done for quite some time. But part of the beauty of using Mari to create your textures is that Mari really paved the way with what's called a multi-tile approach to texturing using what Mari refers to as UDIMs. Now these UDIMs or patches inside of Mari are essentially different texture spaces here inside of Maya. So with this particular version of the asset, I have everything laid out into a single texture space. However, if we needed a fairly high resolution texture, then we would have to create one of those textures for the entire creature. Well, maybe it's not every texture. Maybe only a portion of the creature needs a high resolution texture and we can get away with lower resolutions for the other pieces. Maybe it's his body. Or maybe it's one specific map that we want to be very high resolution while the other maps can be lower resolution. Well, this sort of limits us when we're working with a single texture space. Now, this particular version, if we move over here to the opposite side and select him, if I tap that up arrow key again, you can see I've laid out all of the UVs, but each of the mesh objects has been laid out inside of the texture space by itself. So, if I select just his body, you can see that his body is taking up the entirety of this 0 to 1 space. And the same with maybe these legs here. If I select those two pieces, you can see I've laid each one of his little legs out inside this space as well. Now this is one way that we can begin to approach a multi-tiled layout. We can group like objects into a single layout, for example his leg here, or his body. And you can see we can take this and we can begin to shift them. Now inside of Maya, that's pretty simple to do. Uh, we can come over here and let's just say shift select his little pincher or his the tip of his leg here and then the kind of the extension of his leg and we'll come over into our UV editor and I'm actually going to make this a little bit larger because some of the UI is cut off there so we'll just stretch this out a bit and basically we want to think of this as a grid so if this is the first block of our grid this upper right quadrant then there'll be another quadrant to the right of that that takes up the exact same space, only shifted one spot in the U. 
This is how Mari begins to think of UDIMs. So if we wanted to shift these shells inside of Maya over one space, it's really simple to do. We can just right click and select all of the UVs and I'll just drag a selection over those. And then we can come up to this little widget right here. Now you want to make sure and place in a value of 1.0 here because however much you put in is going to control how much this is shifted. So if we put in a value of 0.1, we're only going to shift a tenth of the size of this quadrant. So at a value of 1, we can just simply tap this right arrow key and shift those UV shells over one texture space. Now inside of Mari, we're going to start out with this UDM, UDIM right here, or this area right here. This is going to be numbered 1001, and then we've just shifted these shells to the UDIM number 1002. We'll get more into this once we get inside of Mari, but now you can see what we can do by shifting these. If I come back over to object mode and select all of those objects, we can now create a separate texture for his body and then a separate texture for his legs. So maybe we wanted, let's say, a full 2K texture for the body, but we only needed maybe 512 or 1K textures for the legs. We could do that easily by using separate texture maps for each one of these. So again, we could come over here and we could begin to select various objects, maybe this leg here, and we could begin to shift them. So we'll shift that over two places. And we'll come over and grab this other leg. And we'll shift that over three places. And I think you're getting the picture here. So in doing this, let me just select the entire creature. We still haven't shifted this other leg over, but that's okay. You can see we now have this set up so that we can create four different texture maps for each of the selected pieces of geometry. So we've got body, leg, leg, leg. This is kind of the process when you're working inside of Mari. Now notice here that when it comes to the legs, each one of these legs is really identical. It's just been positioned a little bit differently for the character. However, I've not laid these UVs out in an identical fashion. So if we selected this guy, and then we selected these two, uh, you can see here that in this case, we've got this shell is in about the same spot as this one, but this one is completely different from this one, and this one, this one, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing you should understand is that Mari does support overlapping UVs. So, being that each one of these legs is really pretty much identical in terms of the mesh object, what we could do is we could create uh, a situation inside of our UVs where each one of these shells takes up the same texture space. And by bringing that over into Mari, Mari's going to recognize that and allow us to paint the texture for one leg, but it would really be applied to all four legs. So you can really begin to think about your UV layouts a little differently in terms of bringing your assets over inside of Mari. So this one here, let's just select the entire group, is a situation where you can see that I've set the UVs up for our little creature in a little different fashion. For each one of those four legs, I've got them each in their own texture space. Now this is not the tip or the, the claw portion of the leg, but this is the leg body itself. Now for this texture space, I could set this to something small, like 512K. So basically, that texture is not going to take up much space in my scene, therefore I don't need that high of resolution. Where, again, for the body, I could set this up as something like 1 or even 2K, uh, whatever my situation calls for. Now, I've set these four textures right here up in a very specific way. You'll notice here that as we move from pincher to pincher, each one of these takes up the exact same texture space, but they're not overlapping. Now, I've set these up in this fashion so that we can utilize a feature over in Mari called patch linking. Now patch linking is sort of an expansion on the idea of overlapping UVs. We can or we have the ability to link these patches together so by painting on one of them we would essentially be painting on all four but it also gives us the flexibility to unlink them if we wanted to create some kind of detail that is not symmetrical or is uh, maybe unique from claw to claw to claw. So 
This is why I've laid these UVs out in this fashion. So in preparing your assets to come over inside of Mari, it really starts here inside of Maya at the UV stage. Now we've been talking about UVs. I do want to mention at the end of this video that Mari does support P-Text texturing. Now we have a lot of great training on that on Pluralsight.com, but we're not really going to be diving deep into that in this course. Okay, great. Let's go ahead at this point and move on to our next clip and we'll learn about a feature called Selection Sets.